G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're in the menu because we're going to look at scripts. I cannot write scripts. I cannot program every time I do my head hurts and if you wanted me to try and teach that I think everyone else's head would hurt too. So let's not do that. Let's use a script designed by someone who can actually do this stuff well. MMaster's Automatic LCDs is an absolutely awesome script. It allows so many functions with so little effort that it is just wonderful. And it's a great example that we can use so that then you can start using other scripts that you find on the workshop in your worlds. When you find a script you like on the workshop and you subscribe to it, you might expect that when you load your game, you're going to have to go into your settings and check on your mods and find it in your mod list. Well, no. Scripts are vanilla. You need no active mods. So we'll leave that with no active mods and we'll load up this world. And once we've built the needed blocks, I'll show you where to find your scripts. We've loaded into the standard tutorial world that I like to use with the talisman and my base and the LCDs with the pretty sunrise picture. And for this example, we're going to use the talisman to set up some LCDs to display cargo and power and all that sort of stuff. We're going to need a couple of blocks to make this work. So let's delete these two pieces of armor here. Let's place down a programmable block. And let's place down a time block. You need both of these blocks for this to work. Right click on the programmable block and then we're sh shown this menu. You have custom data, edit, run and recompile. Most of the time you're only going to need to use edit. You may for some scripts need to enter arguments in here that will affect how the script will run. And you may need to recompile at times to make sure the script's working, particularly if you change this little setting. This is something I haven't mentioned much before or possibly at all before. And this is ownership. Ownership is incredibly important to making scripts work. If you're having trouble and your script doesn't seem to be working, make sure every block in the chain is owned by you and tested again. You may need to recompile if you've changed that any ownership settings. Once you do that, if it's still not working, then it might be a problem with the script, but always check your ownership settings first. With that out of the way, let's import our script. So we click on edit, we click on browse workshop, and then we'll find our scripts. In this list will be all of the scripts that you've subscribed to. So we can click on automatic LCDs, click on OK, and we'll see that this field here has changed. It's got all of the code for automatic LCDs too. We click check code to compile the code and it also makes sure that everything's running fine. Click remember and exit which is save and exit. Now we have our script in our programmable block. This script we want running all of the time. To make it do that we need a timer block to trigger this programmable block. This timer block also needs to have ownership settings correctly. We're going to want this timer block to trigger the programmable block all of the time, or as often as it can, so that the screens update with the highest frequency they can get away with. So we want the delay set really low, and we want to set this up so that it triggers. First up, where's our programmable block? There it is. We want to click run. Again, for automatic LCDs too, no argument required. For some scripts you may need an argument. Then you will also want the timer block to be triggered now and start. Those two settings will ensure that the timer block keeps getting triggered when you reload the world. Constantly gets triggered while you're playing so that the screens keep updating. With that set, still nothing's happened so we need to click start on our time block. Then you'll see this flickering happen. And make sure you silence your timer block. These things flickering and triggering that often. That beep's gonna get irritating. With that done, 
we don't actually need to touch either of those blocks again. Automatic LCDs makes it so easy that that's it. They're done. They're finished. We're sorted with those. Now we can get about actually making them useful. If we put down this LCD panel, we can then start playing around with this script. If we right click on the LCD panel, the first thing you're going to want to do is change your name of your LCD panel to include this string. You need open square brackets, blah blah blah. You need open square brackets, capital LCD, close square brackets. For those of you without the ability to do the close square brackets, apparently exclamation, capital LCD, exclamation also works. And if you look into the script documentation, you can actually change what you need here. We're going to stick with the square brackets thing. And what we're actually going to do is do it on the beginning of it, which also works. What that name does is allow the script to know that it's going to interact with this panel so that it doesn't interact with panels that you've got pictures on. It doesn't interact with panels that you've got fixed text on. It only interacts with the panels that you want it to. Now that we've done that, you can see that it's asking us to write some commands into the custom data of this panel. So we can do that. With automatic LCDs, there's a very simple syntax to how you're going to set things up. You're going to have a command, then you can have a set of arguments after it. It is always arranged in this fashion where you have your command first, then your first argument, then your second argument. The first command we're going to look at is echo. Echo gives us a line where we can then enter text or leave it blank. So if you want to create blank spaces between some of your other displays, some of your other lines on the display, you can use echo or you can use it to create headings. So we can write echo power and then what should display on our LCD is power, just the word. Now, what we can do is use power as a command as well. If we write that there without the echo prefix, we will then have this, where it's showing power, which is our echo line, and then this command, which is the power command, has shown that we have reactors. We have 1.3 megawatts used of a potential maximum of 30, and that's 4.3%. We've got this nice little visual bar. We can then leave a line between that and the next one, which will be our cargo click OK and that'll give us our cargo percentage with a blank space in between. What if we want to see the inventory that's actually in the cargo? Well, we leave another gap and write inventory you can see that it now starts scrolling and it's also displaying what's on board this ship of every single type of thing. And it's going to keep scrolling until it's shown us all of them. Ugh. I don't think we need to see all of that, do we? So let's add a few arguments to that inventory command. So with our inventory scrolling like this, we can't see what's up the top. And really, maybe we just want to know what, how much ice we've got on board. To do that, we can change our inventory command with a few arguments. Now, the first argument for the inventory command is a filter based on block names. We don't want to use that argument, so we press star and that allows us to leave that argument blank. What we do want is for it just to show ice, so we write plus ice. Then when we have a look and it updates. Now we've just got in the ores summary, ice, and it tells us exactly how much we've got. What if we wanted to just show the ice that's in one of our cargo containers? Well, if we change the names of our cargo containers or specify them, because they're currently named exactly the same thing, we can do that. So now that they're named differently, 
we can have a look at our inventory and we'll see that the oxygen generator has some ice and one of our small cargo containers has a few items in it and the other small cargo container I think has none so small container one has some and small container two has none so currently we've got it showing ice which is fine we'll leave it with that let's do another inventory and let's give it so let's make it so that it only shows what's in the first cargo container. We can do that by specifying the name of the cargo container. If we do this, so we enter the squiggly brackets, small, I think we need correct capitals, small cargo contain, ugh, container one. Okay. Let's see if I got that right. So with it displaying everything that's in that cargo container and everything that isn't, we're again getting the same scrolling problem. Maybe we just want to know what ammunition we've got in there. So let's change this to add the argument of ammo. Now, there we go. So now we can see We've got a summary of all of the ice that's on board the ship. And then we've got this ammo summary. Now that's not really clear that it's only in one of the cargo containers. So we'll go back to our custom data. Enter echo. Small cargo one. Now. That makes things a little clearer. Let's do a little bit of nice formatting. There we go. So that's some of the inventory settings and some of the arguments you can use with this script. You can set this up to do all sorts of crazy things. So let's have a look at some of the other ones. If we walk outside and head on over to this weird looking almost monster trucky thing over here I've actually set up a couple of LCDs on it one of the nice things about M Master's automatic LCDs is that you can set it up so that your LCDs can replace your HUD what we've got in this little ship is a couple of LCDs that we can see when we're in first person and that kind of give us the equivalent of some of the information we could get and sometimes even more information than we can get from our HUD. So we could even turn it off and have a nice clear view of everything. The way these are set up is very similar to what we did before. The LCDs are named with our LCD in brackets and our programmable block has the script loaded up. You can see here. And our timer block is set up so that it's triggering all the time with the exact same actions we set up before. The arguments on the LCDs, however, are quite different. If we look at our left LCD, we've got this power time P argument, which is a thing that allows us to show the percentage of the power. In this first argument, we have our group of batteries. So we just wanted our battery power, not our reactor time. And then two is the argument that says how many hours so that it can show a percentage bar. Because if it drops below that, we know roughly how much time we've got left. I just thought it'd be more graphically interesting to do it that way. Then we've got a blank line and then we have the damage argument which will tell us if there are any blocks damaged on our ship. Currently we have no damaged block and we have 100% or at least 100% which is at least two hours of power remaining in our batteries. For our right LCD we have a few different arguments which you can play around with and kind of add a little bit of fun. So our speed in kilometers per hour, our space, our acceleration, our altitude above sea level, and then our height above the ground. That could be useful in the future when I do any of my tests for dropping things like parachutes. I wish I'd looked at that before. Anyway, let's see how these work. Currently, we're parked with our 
Oops, wrong key. Currently we're parked with our lock on. Let's start driving. And you can see these LCDs update at a pretty decent frequency. And you can see that I don't really need a HUD at all. There are arguments in this script that allow you to tell distance from a GPS marker, that allow you to do countdowns, that allow you to tell what the local gravity is. Basically, pretty much everything you can see on your HUD and a whole lot more can be done using this script to display information on LCDs. I said it at the start, but I'm going to say it again. If you want more information on this, check out M Master's full guide on the workshop as to how to, oh, as to how to do some of the more advanced setups. Before we finish up this tutorial on scripts, let's have a closer look at ownership settings. Right here we've got a tiny little base that's not connected to anything else. It's got a reactor, a programmable block, a cargo container, a timer block, and an LCD. Right now, the cargo container is set to own, be owned by nobody. The LCD is set to be owned by nobody. The programmable block is also set to be owned by nobody. Small reactor, timer, all set to be owned by nobody. And right now, everything is working. If I take cargo out of the cargo container, it will update this screen to show that I've done that. But what if I change the cargo container to be owned by me? Will things still work then? It's owned by me, and now nothing can be seen. This is a bit interesting because anything that's owned by me is not accessible by things that are owned by nobody. But the other way round, if we change our programmable block to be owned by me, we get this warning to say we must recompile, so let's recompile. If we change the timer to be owned by me, and we change the LCD to be owned by me. Now it's updating, and with the cargo owned by me, this will still update. But, if we change this cargo container to be owned by nobody, we'll still be able to see everything update. Let's put a couple more things in there, and this will update. There's a hierarchy in ownership. Things owned by you are able to access things owned by nobody. But things owned by nobody are not able to access things owned by you. If any of these functional parts, the programmable block and the timer block, are not owned by the same person, things will stop working. So we've started that timer block. We take all this out. And a whole lot of nothing. This is not working. If we change the ownership of this block back to me, everything updates. This means if you're having troubles, like I said before, make sure that everything's owned by you. What about the LCD? Do we need it to be owned? Change it to nobody. And... And... Nothing. Oh, no, just a delay. It works. LCD is owned by nobody, programmable by me, timer block by me. These two need to have the same ownership and they need to have a higher level of ownership than the blocks they're accessing. And the highest level of ownership is ownership by the player. So if you've matched these two, the rest should work as long as everything's set to either the same level of ownership or lower. 
M Master's Automatic LCDs 2 and many, many other scripts out there had amazing functions that they add to Space Engineers. There's scripts that control solar panels so that they turn to face the sun. There's scripts that allow you to keep ships level that wouldn't normally remain level. There are all sorts of crazy things that people have managed to do to expand what Space Engineers is capable of. Hopefully, this information will allow you to start testing those and find out which ones you want for yourself. As always, there is plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.